Hey, good evening YouTube. So this is one of the Lenovo batteries that I've picked up to harvest some lithium cells out of. This is one of the older ones, 2010. And these do not have the little clips on the end. You can see it's just a straight and a seam right there. And I get my little spudger tool. Came in a little uh, phone opening kits. And you can just give that a pry. These are actually the easier ones to open. And what you're trying to do is get, you can see right there, I get that, that little seam to open up. And then you want to be a little careful here, but you don't want to go really deep into here because the cells are right there and you don't want to, you don't want to gouge into them. And you got to find where the little clips are as you go down here. I find if you just kind of hold that in your fingertips and just get a little bit of the uh, tool in there. You don't want to dig it in too deep or you'll uh, damage the batteries. And you just kind of work your way down. You got to kind of feel where the clips, there's little plastic clips in there. But the idea is you want to try to keep the tip of the spudger in there. And then once you get to the end, and these, this is another one of the purple batteries, and you just crack it open like a and like a clam, and what they do is these have double stick tape, so you need to uh, need to be careful at this point. So actually, these are all wired in series here. The later cells, like the 2012 cells, they have this bottom cell is reversed, and that one you have to be careful of because there's actually two connections right here that are right next to each other. Let me show you one of those. This is the later model board. You can see right there. On that one, these two connections right here, this is the positive of one battery and this is the positive of the other one. So you've got four volts between those two and the wires are really close. Early batteries are all in actually wired in series so they're actually a little bit uh, safer because the only place you have the connection is on the end. But let's see if we can get that out of here. And these usually have the nicer uh, double-sided tape on the back. I like these early ones because this tape here is pretty strong and it comes off in one nice long piece. You hardly get any residue. I got a little bit right there. The later batteries have just kind of an adhesive. There's no backing to the tape. So those are a real mess. They're sticky and but yeah these just come right apart. You tear it off smoothly. All you have to do is just cut these apart. Like I say the early ones are all in series. So you've got a series connection there and there's one right down there so you just have to cut those apart. I usually cut the uh, cut the wires off and then cut the traces off. Kind of do that in steps but yeah got them ready to go and then I'll show you what it looks like when I get them separated here. Okay there I got the three pair of cells separated and now what I like to do is check the voltage before I do any Thing with them and these have all been testing pretty good. There we got 379, so 378, and then this one 378. So I'll write that down. We got 378, and this one was a little higher. So now that's ready to charge. So in the morning I'm going to take these three out, put them on my two chargers, and I'm charging at one amp for the pair. So I'm leaving these in uh, parallel because the battery pack and holders I'm going to use for these are set up to handle two cells in parallel. And the nice thing with doing that is all your connections are made onto the tabbing that's already spot welded to the cells. So as long as I get cells that check out at a reasonable voltage, that usually means that both cells are okay. If one of these cells were shorted 
and dead, it would take the other one down. So if the pair of cells tests out at a decent voltage and takes a decent charge, I want to let these sit for approximately two weeks and then I'm going to test the voltage after sitting. So I'm taking them from this 3.78, I'm going to charge them to 4.1 and then let them sit for about two weeks and then I'll check the voltage a second time. Then I'll do a discharge test on the ones that have a high voltage after resting. So I want to get a reasonable size pack so that I can hook it up to my solar charge controller and charge it. And then I want to also see if my AC power inverter will run off of these because it's supposed to handle up to 16 volts. So that's my thinking is if I charge these to 4 volts a piece, 4 times 4 is 16, so I can make myself a 16 volt pack. I'll charge them, let them rest, and then discharge them. And then we'll go through and try to sort these out. So I'll show you what that looks like when I get there. So if you have any questions or comments, post that up um, in the comment section below there. I'll post any updates to this video in the upper right corner. If you haven't already done so and you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe. There's a link down here in the lower right corner. And as always, thanks for watching.